Hello viewers, welcome to May June 2018 YEC, also known as WASI, past questions and detailed solution, general mathematics, mathematics core paper 2, part 2. This part contains questions 6 to 13, that is 8 questions. You are expected to answer 5 questions in this part solution to eight questions in one video question six in a road worthiness test on 240 cars 60 percent passed the number that failed had faults in crush brakes and stereo as follows crush only is 28 crush and stereo is 14 crush stereo and brakes you have eight cars crush and brakes you have 20 cars brakes and stereo only you have six cars the number of cars with faults in stereo only is twice the number of cars with faults in brakes only a part of the question draw a venn diagram to illustrate this information b part how many cars had what we got one 40 bricks what we got two only one fourth solution total number of cars tested you have 240 out of which 60 percent passed so therefore number of cars that pass the test is 60 percent of 240 and that is 60 over 100 times 240 and that gives 144 so therefore number of cars that failed is equal to number of cars that passed subtracted from total cars tested that is 240 minus 144 and that is 96 cars that failed the test now we have the general universal set all the cars tested you have 240 but this question centers on 40 cars cars with faults so we are working with 96 in the solution let's see represent crush b is bricks and s is stereo so from the question crush only that is no business with bricks and stereo that is crush intersection bricks complement intersection stereo complement you have 28 crush and stereo you have 14 crush stereo and bricks the intersection of the three fourths is eight crush and bricks you have 20 now bricks and stereo only no business with crush that is six from the question those that has for those that had faults in stereo only that is without crush and brakes is twice those that had faults in brakes only no crush and no stereo so if those with faults in stereo only is s therefore those with faults in brakes only becomes two s so we have to put all of this information in the Venn diagram. So I'm going to enlarge it so that you can see it very well. In Venn diagram notation, rectangle denotes universal set and circle for the subset. Now, the universal set, all the cars is 240, but the question centers round cars with fault so we are taking 96 you can see crush car with, with a crush issue 
brakes and steering they are 96 so we start cars with the three fourths that is eight intersection of the three fourths from the question those with crush issue only they are 28 no business with brakes and steering that is 28 crush and steering that is crush and steering they are 14 the whole of this place already 8 is out of it the many part becomes 6 we've already attended to this then follows by you have uh, cars which with issues on brakes and steering only without crush so this part is not included but just this part that is six because in this place now there is crush here but we are interested in brakes and steering only it follows that cars with faults in steering only without crush and brakes the number is s and this number is twice those that had faults in brakes only that is 2s so this place becomes 2s to find s you need to add everything in the subset and equate it to 96 before you can answer part b of the question before we can attempt part b we need to get s so you have to add everything in the subset and equate it to 96 that is 28 plus 12 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6 plus s plus 2s equal to 96 if you add common terms in the left hand side you have 60 plus 3s equal to 96 3s is equal to 96 minus 60 and that is 36 divide through by 3 s is equal to 36 over 3 and that is 12 b roman figure 1 40 bricks only this is the entire subset for bricks so in that place you have 12 plus 2s that is 2 times 12 plus 8 plus 6 and that is 50 so 50 cars had brakes issue roman figure 2 cars with only one fourth you must note it only one fourth that is crush plus brakes plus steering that is 28 plus 2s plus s and that is 28 plus 24 2 times 12 then plus 12 and that is 64 question 7a find the equation of the line passing through the points 2 5 minus 4 minus 7 such equation which can be formed using this formula so you have the point gradient form precisely so from the given point here from this point 2 is s1 y is y1 minus 4 is s2 minus 7 is y2 so if you insert the various figures into the formula you have this step if you subtract the right hand side you have this and if you divide this you have two so you simply cross multiply and you have y minus 5 equal to 2 times s minus 2 if you open the brackets 
you have y minus 5 equal to 2s minus 4 minus 4 so we we'll try to move this constant to the right hand side and you have y equal to 2s minus 4 plus 5 and y is equal to 2s plus 1 that is the form of y equal to ms plus c question 7b three ships p q r o are at c the bearing of q from p is 0 30 degrees you must note this word from and the bearing of p from arrow is 300 degrees if pq is equal to 5 kilometers p arrow 8 kilometers my figure 1 illustrate the information in a diagram my figure 2 calculate correct to 3 sf d part 1 of roman figure 2 distance between q and arrow part 2 of roman figure 2 bearing of arrow from q so you have to start from here what means is that you 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 locate q from p you must consider the angle this angle here is in first quadrant anyhow you draw p you must get q from first quadrant so you must be careful in doing that now let's say you draw your p at the margin of your note that means q will be outside your note so you know how to position it so we have to take p somewhere here now this is p the bearing of q from p is 30 that should be in the first quadrant and the distance there is five kilometer you draw it to scale you have somewhere here so let's have q to be here so this is q when you go on bearing of p from arrow bearing of p from arrow is 300 degrees now we are getting p from arrow already p is here so i have to locate because of the the angle 300 is in fourth quadrant so you have to draw arrow such that you can join it to p to p for 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 instance if you draw arrow somewhere here 300 is here that means you cannot link p and arrow together so arrow has to be somewhere here the bearing is 300 you have it in the fourth quadrant so that you can link both together and at the end you join q and arrow together this is what you have in the diagram all right so here is 30 degrees the distance is five kilometer now from arrow you have 300 you have 300 for now look at what, what happened here from this point to this point you have one you have 270 degrees that is three quadrant now from this place from the from where you have west to the line that join p and arrow that angle is 30 that is 30 plus 1 plus 270 is 300 so that place is 30 degrees automatically that angle is also equal to this angle alternate angle if from here to here is 30 and that quadrant is 90 the remaining part becomes 60 so that 60 plus this 30 becomes 90 degrees this time between p and arrow is 8 kilometer you have it there 
so we have this angle is needed along the line so we label it theta here is alpha and this angle is beta so that is my figure one my figure two part one we should calculate the distance between q and arrow q and arrow this angle facing q and arrow is right is 90 degrees that means we can take this triangle as right angle triangle with the application of pythagoras rule we can get the distance between q and arrow that is one then bearing of arrow from q this is arrow now you go to q and get the bearing and bearing here we always use three digit bearing so the the bearing of arrow from q is from the north to that line that join q and arrow together now we we know that the whole of this line is 180 but we are interested from the north to this part that means we need to get this part if you get this small angle subtract it from 180 you get the bearing of arrow from q distance q arrow can be obtained using pythagoras rule i've already said that this angle q p arrow is 90 degrees so the side facing the angle is the longest side hypotenuse so you have q arrow squared equal to p q squared plus p arrow squared so p q is five you square it p arrow is eight you square it and you have 25 plus 64 and that is 98 to get q arrow take the square root of 89 not 98 89 and that gives 9.43 kilometers to 3 sf part 2 of roman figure 2 bearing of q bearing of arrow from q as i said it is 180 minus this small angle that we denoted with beta the bearing of arrow from q you go to q and you start moving from north to that line that joins q and arrow together the whole of that line is 180 so we need this part subtract it from 180 to get the bearing of arrow from q but here you notice that this angle is equal to this small angle here alpha they are alternate angle they are alternate angle but we cannot get alpha alpha directly this whole quadrant is 90 degree now here is already 30 once we get theta you add theta to 30 subtract the result from 90 and you get alpha which is equal to beta so let's get theta first since triangle is right angle triangle you can use trigonometry ratio so this becomes opposite and this is adjacent so tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent that is 5 over 8 and you have 0 0.625 to get theta you take the inverse of tangent of 0 0.625 and that is 32 degrees so if you add the three angles in that quadrant that is 30 degrees plus 32 for theta plus alpha equal to 90 degrees so alpha is equal to 92 alpha is equal to 90 degrees minus 62 degrees and you have 28 degrees if you add these two angles you have 62 so therefore bearing of arrow from q is 180 degrees minus 28 degrees 
and that is 152 degrees. Peter calls simplified maths. If you are viewing and watching from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share PSM videos. If you are viewing and watching from Facebook, follow and like the page. Also, share PSM videos to get more updates from time to time. Question 8a. Lamy bought a book for 300 naira and sold it to Bola at profit of S percent. Bola then sold the same book to James at a profit of S percent. If James paid 6S plus 3 over 4 more for the book than what Lamy paid, find the value of S. The whole transaction begins with Lamy. The amount he or she bought the book, that is a cost price, is equal to 300 naira. So we get the selling price. Selling price is the cost price plus the profit made. Remember, the profit made is on the cost price. So the selling price is 300 plus S percent of the cost price, 300. If you simplify this part, you have 300 plus S over 100 times 300. That simplifies to 300 plus 3S Naira as the selling price. The selling price for Lamy become the cost price for Bola, which is this. Now, Bola also made a profit of S percent on the cost price. So Bola's selling price is equal to cost price plus the profit made. The cost price is 300 plus 3S and the profit is S percent of the cost price. S percent means S over 100 times the cost price. If you simplify further, you have 300 plus S then plus S over 100 times 300 that is 3S. S over 100 times 3S you have 3S squared over 100. Following the highest power of the of the letter, you have 3s squared over 100 plus 6s plus 300. If you add 3s and 3s, you have 6s. Now to James. The selling price for Bola becomes the cost price, the amount that James bought the same book. But James paid 6s plus 3 over 4 more than what Lamin paid. Meanwhile, Lamin paid 300 naira. So if James paid this more, you have to add it to what Lamin paid and is equal to the cost price for James. So we have a we have an uh, equation, so let's simplify if we have quadratic or linear equation. So first, let's transfer all the terms to one side because we are already suspecting quadratic equation because of 3s squared over 100. If we transfer all the terms, you have it this way. And you can see that plus 6s minus 6s is zero plus 300 minus 300 is zero you are left with 3s squared over 100 minus 3 over 4 equal to zero so let's clear the fractions by multiplying through by 100 so you have 3s squared you multiply this term by 100 the 500 by 4 is 25 times 3 you have 75 equal to 0 if you collect like terms or you transfer this term you transfer it you have s squared 
equal to 75 divide through by 3 so you have 3 s squared equal to 75 divide through by 3 you have s squared equal to 25 to get s find the square root of both sides so s is equal to square root of 25 and that is 5 that is 5 we did it this way because we are not interested in the negative value of s so we just take it direct question 8b find the range of values of s which satisfies the inequality you have 3s minus 2 less than 10 plus s less than 2 plus 5s you cannot obtain a direct solution with this form of inequality it has three parts for you to solve easily you have to break it down the middle term 10 plus s connects the first term and third term if you break it down first term and second term forms one inequality second term and third term forms another inequality so you solve them respectively by collecting like terms when you do that you have s less than equal to six but let's come here if you collect like terms you have minus 4s less than minus 8 if you divide through by minus 4 anytime you divide or multiply an inequality statement with a negative number the sign always changes so this less than becomes greater than and this implies that 2 is less than s now for us to write the the range a number must come first followed by s and the other number so we have to start with this with the second solution that is 2 less than s less than 6 less than 6 so the range can be s less than 6 or s greater than 2 but putting it together you need to reverse this to 2 less than s so that you have 2 less than s less than 6 as the range of values of s which satisfies the inequality question 9 in the diagram pt is equal to 4 cm ts equal to 6 cm pq equal to 6 cm and angle s p arrow equal to 30 degrees calculate correct to the nearest whole number a part of it s arrow b part area of t q arrow s solution in this diagram you have two triangles triangle p t q and triangle p s arrow so by properties of similar triangles in the first triangle the ratio of p t to t q is equal to ratio of p s to s arrow we know p t for us to get s arrow because we know p s we must get t q so this is t q and we are to consider the first triangle p t q and we are to go by cosine rule because you have two sides and an included angle the side you are looking for the angle based that side is given to you so you go by cosine rule where you have t q squared equal to p t squared plus p q squared minus 2 times the product of the two sides and cos 30 degrees 
So you have t q squared equal to 4 squared plus c squared minus 2 times 4 times 6 cos 30 degrees is 0 0.6880. So t q squared is equal to, you have 16 plus 36 minus 48 times the angle. If you add together and multiply, you have 52 minus 41.58568. If you subtract, you have 10.432. To get TQ, you take the square root of 10.432, and that is approximately 3.23 centimeters. So back to this ratio. So you have 4 over 3.23 equal to 10 over S arrow. If you make S arrow, arrow the, the subject, you have 10 times 3.23 divided by 4, and that is 8.075. If you multiply first, you get this. If you divide, you get this. So the nearest whole number, you have 8 centimeters. B part of question 9 to find the area of TQROS. TQROS is a quadrilateral precisely trapezium. So we have TQROS arrow. You can see that TQ is parallel to S arrow. So area of a trapezium is 1 over 2 sum of parallel sides that is TQ plus S arrow times the height. So we need to produce the height and look for it. So already we know TS. We know TS for us to get the height since this length is unknown. You have to get this angle. Get this angle. Now, by properties of similar triangle, you cannot get this angle until you get this angle because both angles are equal. So once we get theta, automatically we have alpha and we can get the height. So you have alpha equal to theta, property of similar triangle. Now to get theta, you have this side is known facing theta. Now 30 is known and we know TQ as 8. So we can use, okay, no, we know TQ as 3.23. S arrow is 8. So we know TQ. So you know when you have two sides and one angle and you want to get another angle, you use sine rule. So we have TQ over sine 30 degrees. This is TQ and the angle facing it. Then equal to PQ, which is 6 over sine theta. That is the angle facing PQ. You have the sine rule in this form. This implies that 3.23 for TQ over sine 30 degrees equal to PQ, that is 6 over sine theta. You make sine theta the subject, you multiply by this and divide by this term, that is what you have here. If you simplify, you have 0 0.928.79. To get theta, you check the inverse of tangent of this value and that gives 68.8. Two degrees. So therefore, alpha is also equal to 68.2 degrees. So we are back here. This is a right angle triangle. So height is opposite. This is hypotenuse. We must talk about sine. So you have sine alpha. That is sine 68.2 degrees equal to opposite H over hypotenuse 6. You make H the subject, 
you simply multiply this way and you have height equal to 6 times sine sine 68.2 sine 68.2 if you multiply sine 68.2 by 6 you have 5.57 centimeters back to the area of the trapezium the formula is this you have parallel side their sum is this then times the height so you have 1 over 2 if you add parallel sides you have 11.305 times the height so everything simplifies to this when you divide you have 31.4844 to the nearest whole number you have 31 square centimeters as the area of T Q R O S. Peter calls simplified maths. If you are viewing and watching from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share PSM videos. If you are viewing and watching from Facebook, follow and like the page. Also share PSM videos. Question 10A in triangle PQS. PQ is equal to 12 cm, PS is equal to 5 cm, angle SPQ, that is this angle, is equal to angle PROQ, this angle equal to 90 degrees. Find correct to 3SF PRO. To get PRO, you need either SRO or QRO. And to get SRO or QRO, the entire length of QS is needed. Solution in triangle PSQ, triangle PSQ is right angle triangle with QS as hypotenuse. So by Pythagoras rule, you have the square on QS is equal to sum of squares on the other two sides and that is qs squared equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared that is 144 plus 25 and you have 169 to get qs take the root of both sides that is qs equal to square root of 169 and that is 13 centimeters remember to get pro what we need is either sro and q arrow now that we know qs let's take sro to be s centimeter if the whole length is 13 and sro is s it means q arrow is equal to 13 minus s from triangle PROS, PROS by Pythagoras rule, supposed to have 5 square, that is the hypotenuse equal to PRO squared plus S squared. So if you make PROS, if you make PRO the subject, you have PRO squared equal to 5 squared minus S squared. So let's leave that at that point from triangle P arrow Q also if you write the Pythagoras rule and you make P arrow the subject you have 12 squared minus bracket open 13 minus S that is for Q arrow now or square in both equation the they have this equal left hand side by implication the right hand side are also equal so you have 5 squared minus s squared is equal to 12 squared minus bracket open 13 minus s or squared if you simplify further you have 25 minus s squared equal to 144 for 12 squared because of this minus sign 
let's still retain the bracket and expand if you expand the terms in the bracket you have 169 minus 26 s plus s squared you open the bracket with this minus sign and you have this result minus 169 plus 26 s minus s squared clearly if you move all the s squares to one side it becomes zero so let's move all the constant term to the left hand side and all the s to the right hand side if you do that you have 25 if you move plus this it becomes minus 144 you move minus this minus 169 it becomes plus 169 already 26 s minus s squared is here already if you transfer this it becomes plus s squared clearly these terms becomes zero if you add and subtract the other side you have 50 equal to 26 s to get s divide both sides by 26 and s is equal to 50 over 26 and that is 1.92 centimeters we can get p arrow using this or this but the first is simpler to use so p arrow squared is equal to 5 squared minus s squared and that is 5 squared minus 1.92 squared for s and that simplifies to 25 minus 3.2 Six eight six four. If you subtract, you have twenty one point three one three six to get p arrow. Take the square root of both sides. So p arrow is equal to square root of twenty one point three one three six. That is four point six one six to three sf. You have four point six two centimeters. We consider four. 6 1 as 3 sf the next number is more than 5 round it up to 1 you add it to 1 it becomes 2 that is 3 sf of the answer question 10 b the length of two ladders l and m are 10 meters and 12 meters respectively they are placed against a wall such that each ladder makes the same angle with the horizontal ground. If the foot of L is 8 meters from the foot of the wall, map go 1, draw a diagram to illustrate this information. 2. Calculate the height at which M touches the wall so you have the vertical wall because wall is always vertical and that is bw the first ladder l lean or is placed against the the wall at this point this is ladder l because the heights are different they can't be in the same position why ladder L ends here ladder M ends here because of the different lengths that they have now they made the same angle with the horizontal and the the foot of ladder L is 8 meter from the foot of the wall this is the foot of the wall so from this place to the foot of the ladder the distance there is 8 meters. Remember figure 2, so you are asked to find the height at which M touches the wall. The height there is BW. So you find this height. You see that we cannot get this height because WD is unknown and Theta is also unknown. Although we know it here and 
10 meters that can only give us from a to w so how will you get a b so to avoid that stress once you get theta here here also become the same value since you have right angle triangle you can pair this with this with the angle here to get the height so we have to start from triangle a w c to get the angle so we have hypotenuse adjacent that is cosine so cos theta is equal to 8 over 10 upper, sorry adjacent over hypotenuse that is 0 0.8 to get theta take the inverse of cosine of 0 0.8 and you have 36.84 so here is also 36.84 from right angle triangle b w d we cannot get b w b w is opposite to this angle while this is hypotenuse so we are talking about sine so sine 38 sine 36.86 is equal to opposite b w over hypotenuse 12 so b w is 12 times sine 36.86 and that is 7.19 approximately 7.2 meters so m touches the wall at a height of 7.2 meters question 11a copy and complete the table of values for y equal to 2x squared plus s minus 10 for minus 5 less than equal to s less than equal to 4 you have the table of values with some missing values for y and you are expected to get them part b using scales of 2 centimeters to 1 unit on the x axis and 2 centimeters to 5 units on the y axis draw the graph of y equal to 2s squared plus s minus 10 for minus 5 less than equal to s less than equal to 4 use the graph to find the solution of that is part c roman figure 1 2 s squared minus 2 s squared plus s equal to 10 roman figure 2 2 s squared plus s minus 10 equal to 2 s equal to 2 s solution part a we are to complete the table of values already you have s values from minus 5 to 4 to get y value we need to do about two things get 2 s squared s remains the same minus 10 is a constant which should appear under each value of s so let's get 2 s squared when s is minus 5 minus 5 squared is plus 25 times 2 you have 50 when s is minus 3 minus 3 squared is 9 9 times 2 is 18 when s is 2 2 squared is 4 2 squared is 4 and 4 times 2 is 8 that should be 8 so here is 8 you can try for other values now s remains the same minus 5 to plus 4 comes down now minus 10 is constant or true then you add together 50 minus 5 is 45 minus 10 you have 35 32 
minus 4, you have 28. Minus 10, you have 18. And so on. Now, let's check this. 8 plus 2 is 10. Minus 10, 0. And so on. You have to plot these points on the graph note. Part B of that question, we have to plot the graph. Let's start with the scale 2 cm to 1 unit on S axis, 2 cm to 5 units on Y axis. By this scale, each boss is 5 lines. The 5 lines by default is 1 cm. So on the Y axis, if you count 2 bosses, that is 2 cm you give it five units the next two is 10 the next two is 15 and so on if you go down you have negative then on the s axis from the origin the next two buses is two units that is is two centimeters that is one unit the next one becomes two if you go to the left you have negative values by this k, it means that one line is equal to 0 0.1 on the s axis and 0 0.5 units on the y axis. In other words, on the y axis, two lines will give you one. So you plot the first set of values. When s is minus 5, y is 35. You can see here is very clear when s is minus 4 y is 18 now we just said that on the y axis two lines is one so if you count the first two lines you have 16 the next two lines 17 the next two lines 18 somewhere here so you plot it against minus 4 so you must know what one line all two lines stand for very very important when s is minus 3 y is 5 that is what you have here when s is minus 2 y is minus 4 if you can't just what I did you have it somewhere here minus 4 when s minus 1 y is minus 9 you have it very close to minus 10 when s is 0 y is 10 you plot that directly on the y axis when s is 1 y is minus 7 1 minus 7 somewhere here when s is 2 y is 0 you plot that directly on the s axis when s is 3 y is 11 that is after 10 you count two lines upward you have 11 when s is 4 y is 26 after 25 the next two lines 26 next is to join the points together and you have the title of the graph the, the, the title is not any other strange name, but the equation that you are plotting. See part of the question. Use the graph to find the solution of Roman figure 1, 2s squared plus s equal to 10. One thing you must note is that you can only use this graph to solve any equation that must be this so sometimes you need to simplify the given equation to the one you have plotted to achieve that you simply transfer plus 10 to the left hand side and you have 2 s squared plus s minus 10 equal to 0 and everything you have here is equal to y. It means that the solution occurs at y equal to zero. That is the point 
where the curve cuts the s axis one point is here and another point so this point is two on the s axis one line is 0 0.5 so here should be minus 2.5 minus 2.5 that is the solution to that equation roman figure 2 2 s squared plus s minus 10 equal to 2 s no matter how you simplify or adjust this equation you cannot get the one that you have plotted now 2s is a linear equation so this this question is not direct actually you are plotting a quadratic and a linear graph on the same graph note so you need to prepare a table of value for y equal to 2s so that after that straight line is plotted the point of intersection of the curve and the line gives solution to this equation let us add the line to it still on part c this is the table of values for the line so you plot it directly when when s is minus 5 y is minus 10 that is what you have here minus 4 for s minus 8 for y you have it here minus 3 for s minus 6 for y minus 2 for s minus 4 for y minus 1 for s minus 2 for y 0 0 that is the origin 1 for s 2 for y when s is 2 y is 4 when s is 3 y is 6 when s is 4 y is 8 so you join all the points together and you are going to have a straight line graph all the points have been joined together and the title also updated so the solution to 2s squared plus s minus 10 equal to 2s at the points of intersection of the curve and the line that is here and here and when you trace this point down you have 2.5 you trace this one up you have minus 2 as the required solution Peter course simplified maths if you are watching and viewing from YouTube don't forget to subscribe like and share PSM videos if you are viewing and watching from Facebook follow and like the page also share PSM videos question 12a if s is equal to you have a column vector or column matrix with element 2 3 y equal to 5 minus 2 z equal to minus 4 13 find the scalars p and q such that ps plus qy equal to z so this is the equation you simply replace s y and z with the column vectors in this form when you multiply you get this when you add the left hand side you have 2p plus 5q in this form 3p plus minus 2q you have 3p minus 2q equal to the right hand side by equality of matrices the first entry here equal to the first entry second entry equal second entry and you have 
a system of linear simultaneous equation so we solve them using elimination method you have the two equations now we want to eliminate variable q to do that q must have the same coefficient in both equations there is 5 and 2 already the lcm is 10 we have to make 5 to be 10 to achieve that multiply through equation 1 by 2 and to make 2 to be 10 you multiply through equation 2 by 5 so you have 4p plus 10q equal to minus 8 and you have 15p minus 10q equal to 65 we are added because the signs for the coefficients are opposite in both equations when you add q disappear and you have 4p plus 15p that is 19p equal to minus 8 plus 65 you have 57 divide through by 19 p is equal to 3 to get q we simply replace p with 3 in equation 1 you can also use equation 2 equation 1 is this where you see p you replace p with 3 so you have 2 times 3 plus 4 q equal to minus 4 minus 4 now this is p equal to minus 4 if you transfer 2 times 3 that is 6 it becomes minus 6 so 5q is equal to minus 10 divide through by 5 q is equal to minus 2 therefore p is equal to 3 and q is equal to minus 2 question 12b roman figure 1 using a scale of 2 cm to 2 units on both axes draw os and oy for minus 5 less than equal to s less than equal to 5 minus 5 less than y less than 5 respectively 2 the quadrilateral w s y z with w this coordinate you have s you have y and z roman figure 3 the image w s y z of the quadrilateral w s y z under the anticlockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin where you have w w1 s s1 y y1 and z z1 solution to this question so you have the the two axes os and oy and the scale is clearly stated 2 cm to 2 units on both axes so the first point here that is where s is 2 y is 3 this is point for w this is the point for s when s is 4 y is minus 1 then y minus 3 minus 4 and z minus 3 for s and 2 for y so we have to get the quadrilateral by joining the points together so from B, Roman figure 2, you join all the points together and you have the quadrilateral. Then Roman figure 3, you are to form the image to also plot. But remember, the rotation is anti-clockwise. So we simply interchange the position of 2, 3 to minus 3, 2 because of the anti-clockwise rotation therefore what is affected is the second point 4 minus 1 becomes 1 and 4 minus 3 minus 4 
becomes min becomes 4 and minus 3. Then minus 3, 2 for z becomes minus 2 minus 3. So you so you, you plot the image as well. So you have W1, W1, you have the Z1 is there, you have Y1 and you have S1. Next, you join them together as well. The points from the image have been joined together and you have the complete solution to that question. The quadrilateral WSYZ and the image W1S1, Y1 and Z1. Question 13. The frequency table shows the max distribution of a class of 30 students in an examination. The mean mark of the distribution is 52. A part of the question, find the value of S and Y. B, construct a group frequency distribution table starting with a lower class limit of 1 and a class interval of 10. C, draw a histogram for the distribution. D, use the histogram to estimate the mode solution. Part A. In order to find S and Y, we have the table in this form. The max, therefore S, the frequency is F. The mean is given to you. Because we are asked to find S and Y, let's look for FS. That is multiplying S by F. 10 times 1 is 10 2 20 times 1 is 20 30 times s 30 s and so on summation means we have to add so if you add all the if you add the column for frequency you have 16 plus s plus y you add the column for fs you have 900 plus 30 s plus 50y from the question the mean s bar is equal to 52 there are 30 students that means sum of frequency is 30 it follows that from this place 16 plus s plus y is equal to 30 if you transfer 16 over you have s plus y equal to 30 minus 16 and you have s plus y equal to 14 let's call that equation one from the means formula the mean is 52 summation of fs is 900 plus 30s plus 50y and summation of frequency is 30 to clear fraction multiply 52 by 30 and you have 52 times 30 equal to 900 plus 30 s plus 50 y you multiply you have 1560 equal to the right hand side if you transfer 900 over you have 1560 minus 900 equal to 30 s plus 50 y and you have 30 s plus 50y equal to 660 divide through by 10 you have 3s plus 5y equal to 66 you have equation 2 you have to solve both equations simultaneously for s and y so you have equation 1 equation 2 i want to eliminate y first to do that, this y needs to be 5. So you multiply through equation 1 by 5, and you have 5s minus 5y equal to 70. Let's call that equation 3. To eliminate y, 
you subtract equation 3 and 2 side by side so you have 5s minus 3s you have 2s 5y minus 5y is 0 70 minus 66 you have 4 divide both sides by 2 s is equal to 4 over 2 and that is 2 to get y you simply replace s with 2 in equation 1 you can as well use equation 2 equation 1 is this and s is 2 you have 2 plus y equal to 14 collect like terms y is equal to 14 minus 2 and that is 12 therefore s is equal to 2 y is equal to 12 then b part you have to construct a grouped frequency table with lower class limit of 1 and class interval of 10 so from 1 you move to 10 from 10 you have 11 so from 1 to 10 now so if you add 1 to 10 you have 11 so you keep on adding 10 10 10 all through 1 to 10 you add 1 to 10 you have 11 21 31 and so on then 10 20 30 40 50 and so on if you check now difference between 11 and 1 is 10 difference between 20 and 10 is also 10 if you take it row wise you have 9 9 9 so it's always equal now to have the frequency you replace s with 2 and y with 12 to plot the histo to to plot the histogram we need class boundary to get class boundary you have to get the boundary value first the boundary value is difference in adjacent side divided by 2 you can take 11 and 10 difference is 1 21 and 20 difference is 1 31 and 30 difference is 1 divide 1 by 2 you have 0 0.5 so you have the lower class limit to get the lower class boundary you subtract the boundary value 0 0.5 from the lower class limit so you have 1 minus 0 0.5 you have 0 0.5 11 minus 0 0.5 you have 10.5 and so on to get the upper class boundary you add the boundary value to the upper class limit so 10 plus 0 0.5 you have 10.5 20 plus 0 0.5 you have 20.5 19 plus 0 0.5 you have 90.5 so we plot the histogram what you plot is the upper class boundary against frequency against frequency so let's see to that so you can see the the histogram on display like I said you plot the upper class boundary against frequency against frequency now the frequency the scale used here is one centimeters to one unit so if here is one you have five one here becomes two this is three you have four you have five and six so in in order not to have too many points on the on the on the graph so i skip them but i just explained that they are there so we start from zero point five yes because the bar they are joined together the first bar start from the first lower class boundary than this way so you have 0 0.5 to 10.5 then 10.5 to 20.5 to 30.5 and so on so
so we have 0 0.5 here is 10.5 this 10.5 you have 20.5 you have 30.5 you have 40.5 and so on so the first one frequency is one so this is one you so you trace one from 0 0.5 to 10.5 that is the first bar now the second bar is the frequency is one also so you have 10.5 to 20.5 so the bars are joined together in a, in a histogram the next frequency is two that is 20.5 to 30.5 from 20 you move to 30 the next frequency is five that is 30.5 to 40.5 that is what you have here the next frequency is 12 and that is 40.5 to 50.5 to 50.5 next frequency is one you have four three and one now to get the mode from the histogram you look at the tallest bar so the tallest bar you join the edge of it to the edge of the other bar that is lower to it from both sides so you join this edge to this edge and you join this edge to this edge at the point of intersection of the two lines you trace down to the upper class boundary now this will happen we have done that now from 40.5 to 50.5 you have five lines in that place and the difference is 10 that means each line is two so if you have 40.5 the next line becomes 42.5 and the next line is 44.5 that is where the line that that runs down falls on 44.5 that is the second line from 40.5 therefore the modal mark is 44.5 so this is how you estimate the 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 mode using histogram using histogram note you always plot the upper class boundary against frequency but you join the first lower class boundary against the first upper class boundary and continue in that manner to plot the frequency then you locate the tallest bar and join the two edge to the two lower bar at the point of intersection you trace down and you read off the mode from that point to end this year wire past questions and detailed solution there is every need for you to be saved if you are not to do that you simply give your life to the one that can save you and that is the lord jesus christ and confess him as your lord and personal savior every day of your life if you are saved already, congratulations, live righteously and be prepared because on the last day, some will be taken and some will be left. Take good care of yourself, stay out of trouble, study your books, do the needful at all times, flee every appearance of evil, don't defraud others to make money, use your hands and your brain to work genuinely and legally. And the Lord will bless you. Goodbye and stay tuned.